Mike, COVID fundamentally changed the way businesses conducted. What did that mean for the data and analytics industry? Yeah, Courtney, it's been pretty crazy uh, over the last year and a half. Uh, for data and analytics, a lot of things changed, but the two most important things that changed, first was the need for real-time information. So we saw this real transformation of companies going from kind of old antiquated data to a need for real-time information. And that led them to build data pipelines, real-time data pipelines. The second thing that was really, really monumental over the last year and a half was the move to cloud. So companies that literally a year ago would tell me we're never going to cloud with our analytics, suddenly were begging for help getting to cloud because they needed faster time to value. Mm-hmm. Yeah, surprise, they joined the party. <laughs> they joined the party. <laughs> Better late than never. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Analytics was a little slow. Yes. On, on the other hand, uh, you know, kind of the pandemic and the black swan impact of that really forced people to say, look, I, I got to move fast. I got to scale horizontally much more quickly. I need time to value. And the, the answer to all those questions is cloud. Yep. Yep, we've been hearing that from other speakers today too. I so bet. yes, I bet. I'm not surprised to hear that. So how does having more real-time data change the way businesses operate? Yeah, you know, data doesn't age well, to be perfectly honest. Uh, and in today's world where we're seeing more and more black swan events, it's almost it's almost uh, the opposite, right? Black swan usually means, you know, things that don't happen very frequently, but Fukushima, you know, nuclear accident, then a pandemic, Suez Canal, all these things are things that couldn't be predicted old data models, stale data, legacy data warehouses, none of those things are gonna help you navigate these unexpected events. So having real-time data is absolutely critical in terms of just operating in today's uncertain world. And then secondarily, you know, employees, uh, workers, knowledge workers, people who need data, they're more willing to ask for it now. In the old days, even though they wanted more data to help make decisions, they kind of threw up their hands. They kind of gave up and said, you know what, it's gonna take too long, I'll never get the information out of IT. Now they're asking for it. They're saying, please, I know I can get my hands on this data. And that's helping them to make better informed decisions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. In a world where everyone has access to real-time data, what defines who will win? Yeah, well, you know, having the data isn't necessarily the only thing that's gonna help you compete and win in the market, right? It's a great start, but the reality is what you do with it after that really, really matters. Uh, and companies, that actually do the right things with that data are the ones that are gonna compete and win. So a couple of examples, one would be um, data silos, right? So if you have real time information, but it's kept in silos inside your company, chances are you're gonna make really bad decisions. Um, second is not having a data literate workforce, not having um, people, employees who can work with data can understand it. You know that I can give you a data set and I can give somebody else a data set and they could very easily come up with two different conclusions. We saw a lot of that with the, uh, the last administration, for example, right? You know, you can say whatever you want about data, right? So you really need something called data literacy, the ability to interpret, work with, read, understand data. And that takes effort. That's not something employees learn on their own. That's something that a company has to be very thoughtful about in terms of training their employees to be data literate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are there companies that you have seen do this very, very well, where they've started to really embrace using data and you've just seen them change their business models? You've seen them win? Absolutely, uh, 100%. Um, you know, good example, we work with uh, a, a propane company, right? So this company, uh, propane doesn't sound like the most exciting industry, the most, the industry that you would think you would need data, but think about it, right? That was an industry that was completely disrupted. Um, fracking, new techniques drove commodity prices way down, including natural gas and propane. Um, this company needed to completely revamp their cost structure. They use data and analytics, something as simple as giving data real time to their drivers to be able to optimize routes, to be able to figure out when people are home, to actually feed them real time weather information. They took $25 million out of their cost structure. These are you know, non college educated drivers, but by taking data, sending it real time, putting it into a form factor, in this case, uh, a, you know, a mobile device, a tablet, mm -hmm, yep. <laughs> that they were used to. This is what they use at day to day. So they gave it to them inside of their own workflow, something they were used to. They made them incredibly effective and they transformed and they were able to survive the crisis take costs out by using data and information. That's as simple as it can get. Mm -hmm. I just had a very random thought when you were talking about weather tracking. I, my brain immediately went to the movie Twister. Do you remember when they put the like the little the little balls in yes, the yeah the 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 inside the tornado? And yeah, the tornado. <laughs> absolutely. That was data, real time, that right? Was it was data, streaming out of the tornado. Yeah. There you go. They were yeah. ahead of their time. <laughs> so, can you give us maybe some examples of how decision making is evolving? Yeah, there's a couple of things. Um, first of all, there's there's this democratization, right? So. 
pushing data down. I liken it to the old days before there was actually uh, democracy in governments, right? So there was this elite group of people who said, you know what, we can't let the common people vote because they're just, they, they just don't understand. They don't understand government. They don't understand how to vote. It would be too dangerous to let them vote, right? That obviously over time proved to be wrong and kind of dumb, right? When you think about it, well, the same thing goes on with data, right? So the, 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 uh, the executives, the elites, IT people inside of companies say, well, we don't want to democratize data. We want to give all this data to people because it's dangerous. They might misinterpret it. They might do something bad with it. Um, that has changed, right? So now democratizing data, giving people access to the data they need, that is fundamentally changing how decisions are being made. And then second is collaboration. Um, because of the technology now, you can actually share data at a much larger scale across an enterprise. And the, what I talked about before, the data sitting inside of silos, that's being broken down. And now organizations, sales, marketing, supply chain, they can collaborate together making decisions based on data. You know, a great example is you know, product development and supply chain. In the old days, product development used to develop products and no one even sure you could actually get the, the parts, right? Well, now we've had all these supply chain disruptions and people realize that, hey, maybe before we design this thing, we might want to check with procurement and supply chain and make sure we can actually get the parts we're putting into this thing. That's kind of an example of kind of modern data analytics decision making. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great example, Mike. Thank you for sharing that. So we have one more question for you. What, what are the steps that organizations can take to address the changing nature of decision making? Yeah, first and foremost, they need, to, they need to equip their employees, right? They need to embark on a journey towards data literacy. Uh, data literacy uh, is going to be as fundamental to tomorrow's world of, of data and analytics as sort of reading and writing was to the industrial revolution. Like we have to change the way people think and we have to make them more comfortable with data. The second is we have to use technology correctly. So the ability to actually take data and analytics, um, analyze it, but then put it in context for employees, put it into their day-to-day -day lives, put it into their workflow with things like alerting, self-service, um, the ability to actually see things on a mobile device, which is what most people use today versus a, a desktop computer. Those are all things that are gonna help us be much more effective. Companies that do that really well are the ones that are absolutely gonna compete and win in tomorrow's world. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Mike, this was a great conversation. I really appreciate you being here today. And I know our audience enjoyed all of your insight and knowledge, and I'm sure they'll be hungry for more. Oh, so thanks, thank Courtney. You. It was a great pleasure being here. All right, audience. So here we go on to the next thing. Remember, you can find out more about our amazing festival partners in the resource area. Now I will pass you back to David to round out our regional content with another brilliant guest. Over to you, David.